So last council meeting, was it emotional for you? No, it was more of a more relief, and uh, you know, look, it's been a great ride for two years. I, I like to think I've been a very uh, active and vocal council member, uh, so I'll miss that. And it's good to spend time with the colleagues and to make sure that uh, you know the last couple of days are uh, transition mode, welcoming the new council member that comes in. And uh, it was a good day. And, and uh, I, look, I'm more than anything anxious to get home. And I've told everybody even from the beginning that win or lose. Uh, I was going to win at the end. If I became mayor, that'd be great. And if not, I get to go home. The the life of a of an elected official, a council member, is you know sixty, seventy, eighty hours of of week uh, work a week. It's it's a, it's a lot, and the families uh, suffer for it. And you know they're they're at home while you're out doing all kinds of things. And the last few days, I've spent more time with my family than I have in uh, in two years, and just in just hours during the day, and and seeing them in the morning and. Uh, so it's been great. Um, I'm blessed. So it's it's a good day. So is that what you plan to do going forward? Because I think that's everyone's big question for you since you were so vocal, since you uh, were so public. Uh, and of course, you know, you ran for mayor. So, you know, there's a huge chunk of people who yeah. did uh, vote for you. Hey, what we're, we're what proud, is yeah. next? We're proud of, of the campaign. I mean, we ran and did things that I don't think a lot of people expected would happen. Um, and to get 59,000 votes, and the mayor was at 61,000, um, you know, to, to be that close, it's it's tough. Uh, sometimes you wish you'd rather get beat by 20% so you can go home and be like, well, that wasn't even close. Like, I, I can go home and go to sleep now. But to be that close, I think um, it sends a message that there's still a lot of work to be done. And uh, from a, a next perspective, is you know, for the, after a campaign, I've done this kind of work before. You decompress, you take some time off, and you see where things are, and you have to think about income, family, and because when you it's win or go home. Um, and a council member is out of a job on the 19th. That's it, that's it. So you have to be ready to go back to work and do other things. Uh, but for me, I think I'm going to get get right back in the saddle again and stay engaged on the issues. I like to think that the campaign we put together sparked a real movement of ideas in the city that people perhaps didn't see uh, was there, right? It was under, an undercurrent of, of opportunity, an undercurrent of discontent, of concern about neighborhoods and city hall and all that. And I think we, we tapped into that. Uh, and I, a lot of people don't want to let that go. So my goals would probably be to come back, uh, really get back to focusing on issues, uh, maybe doing a podcast, just starting things to, to engage back into the issues and the things that matter most to San Antonio, and not to let it go. I think uh, we've done a lot of great work. It's not going to be an anti-City Hall type setup. It's going to be more about uh, working with the relationships and, and, and people we built over you know four or five months of a tough campaign. And it's a lot of people. I mean, there's and you most of the time when you lose, and you're that close. People are like, dude, you got to come back. You got you got to run again. That's really not the the right mentality when you get off a campaign. It's how do you keep the mission going, the move, the movement that you created. Um, 5149 is a tight race, and that means that people in this city see things differently. Almost half of the city does. So how do we get back to talking about those things and making sure those people are included? And I think that's where we're going to announce some stuff next week, come out with some new things, and figure out how we're going to continue carrying a message of um, of real citywide opportunity forward. I'm looking forward to it. So we will hear about your future next week in an announcement. Yeah, I think we're going to do some things and put some things together that are going to continue issue advocacy across the city. Uh, and uh, is it an elected office piece? I don't know. People say you're going to run again. You never know. It, it could be anything could come up in politics. Uh, a week is a lifetime in politics nowadays. So what's going to happen in a year and a half? Ain't, nobody knows. Um, and Ron Nuremberg earned a win. And, you know, my job is to now step back and stay engaged. Just because you lose a campaign or you lose a vote doesn't mean you should lose your passion for the community mm -hmm. uh, and the things that you want to do. The issues are still there, right? It's just the voters have chosen a particular leader and a path to go forward on. But the issue still remains. So those are things I think we're going to pick up uh, and really try to be a voice for the community going forward. We're kind of figuring out those ideas right now. Um, but that's just the part of me that enjoys the work. And I think that's been me as a council person for the last two years. Maybe I don't like the machine that's City Hall, uh, just the way things work and all that. Maybe I don't like that downtown bubble, but I love the community work aspect of it, the community change, the, the ideas. That's always been my passion. And I think that's where we're going to go uh, to keep people involved. So what do you think it was that kept you from crossing the finish line. You were so close, as you mentioned. Yeah, I don't, you know, it was a very divisive campaign, um, very divisive. And 
uh, I just tried to keep it positive and talk about issues and, and things that I thought that mattered. Um, and so I don't really think it was any one thing that uh, cost me the election. I think it's little pieces everywhere. And, and when you lose an election, the next 24 hours are the toughest because you sit there and you think, what in the world happened? Especially when you thought, I've got, I've got a great shot at this. When I got into it, I was like, this is a long shot. But we're going to go and we're going to fight every day and we're going to do the best we can. And then as it goes through and then you get in a runoff, then you recognize I, we have a shot to change the system. So when you, it doesn't happen in the next 24 hours, it's usually introspection. And I actually wasn't heartbroken. I was more or less very proud of what we had done. But then you start thinking, where was the miss? And, and where I came to it at the end was just it's a bunch of little things. The amount of people they had to bring in against me is probably what did it at the end. You know, you've got a presidential candidate and Julian Castro came down, uh, Joaquin Castro, the Texas Democratic Party, uh, Texas Organizing Project, and, and, and these groups, these progressive groups, everybody coming in to save the mayor. And at the end of the day, all of that, plus issues here or there, and, and maybe you know personal judgments, divisive campaign, dirty, dirty politics, all that met, it equated 2,675 vote difference. And you can't really, if I'd have been beat by 20, it would have been obvious. Uh, but I think losing by what I did and, and walking away gracious in defeat, too, uh, allows me to turn the page on it pretty quick and get back to you know family and the things that matter most. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. I, I spent my 48 hours beating it up in my head only to realize it wasn't any one thing. And, and he just performed 2,675 votes better. And I've got more work to do if I ever want to do it again in the future. And nothing on the table. We left it all out there. So you talk about divisiveness. Uh, it did get nasty mm -hmm. at, at one point. Of course, you had to fight off these allegations, which were not criminal, but you had to fight off the allegations of domestic abuse with you and your wife. And I know you all put statements out there, but do you ever think that that cloud will will lead you? I, I lead think you? I I don't I don't know if I'd even call it a, a cloud. Look, I don't think it really affected the race too much to any major extent. I think it was a it was a, an amalgam of all things. It wasn't just that, you know. I mean, there was things that um, I I was uh, had a, a dishonorable discharge was said. That I didn't have a college degree. That uh, I mean, it was a, it was a series of lies. I don't pay child support. So all these things, they literally threw everything in the book at me. I mean, you could go back and it's a it was just a ton of negativity. And I, I didn't really run that kind of campaign. Like I didn't think I needed to tear Ron down or his wife down to win the job. I was never going to do it. They made a conscious decision to do that. And it was so many things, I think, that that also cost a few votes here and there as well. So all these things, like I said, add up. Little pockets of mm. things add up. Um, but, you know, you can only... Look, I, I challenged people as well, and it's really only certain media sources that wouldn't stop, and it was really only one, I think the Express News. Um, there's a lot of media bias in certain areas of our town and sometimes you got to remember, we don't want to run people away from politics or scare them into thinking that this is a bad place to spend your career or life, that you can't be somebody who's never made a mistake or you can't be somebody who's never sinned. And, and I said that on election night. I said, look, you can't run people out of this. Good people want to do this job. And if we tear each other down to make it happen, I don't know if that says more about you or me. Um, and I think if we spend the time building people up, learning redemption and forgiveness and trying to figure out context and things like that, in a political campaign, it's very tough. I mean, it is ugly to get into these things. So my team and I, we made a conscious decision to stick to the issues and keep talking about them. Because if you go off on all their attacks, that's all you're ever going to spend time talking about. Then you're just, you're just fighting their attacks, their lies, their whatever it is. So we just stuck to the issues. We stuck to neighborhoods and families. Um, and over time, now that the heat of the campaign is off, sure, we probably end up talking more about it and getting out there and s sharing more of yourself and who you are. In the heat of a campaign, though, you don't go, you know, you try not, you stick to the issues and you try to talk to the things that matter most. And people, I think, generally speaking, are sick of smear campaigns. But again, he didn't need a lot of votes to win. So, I mean, it's like I said, little things across the board may have caused it, and uh, and that's okay. I mean, but is it, um, you know, I'm a forgiver by nature. Some of the stuff is, stuff is tough to forgive. Um, I yeah, just don't think... It, it hurt your wife. It, she mentioned that, that, that it hurt her. 
Um, there yeah. was there yeah. was the reporting of it in in the, in the Express News, um, with one reported SAPD that materialized. Then there was the other report that materialized. Mm-hmm. At DPS, and both of these were, you know, reportedly duplicates of each other. Well, for, they, for, well they weren't duplicates, but so were were from the same case. Yeah, so for once, for once and for all, set the record straight. Oh, did did anything happen? I think my wife and I have been incredibly clear about it, and um, you know, the thing that hurts most about it, and I'll be honest with you. Um, from my wife's perspective, is she doesn't understand it. Right? She doesn't get the she doesn't get the politics. So when we say we're just going to stick to the, here's our point, she doesn't get that. And many nights she'd cry herself to sleep over the fact we can't fight back. And I would tell her, hey, look, um, we can't go down those roads. Let's just, we'll stay, this is, our, this is what we're going to say because it's the truth. Um, and I don't want you to expose yourself any further than we have to in a political campaign. So a lot of what we did was to protect family. At that point, it got so into our family life it wasn't just that. It was where my wife and I met, how she, who she was as a person. I mean, the personal attacks on her were well beyond just calling her a liar. Well beyond that, Marvin. They were uh, very personal attacks against her as a human being, uh, absent of any other issues. So my whole goal was to protect my wife, and I don't think twice about that. I would never mm-hmm. um, put my wife in a position just, that was negative just to get votes. So, you know, we, we told it, you know, we told the truth and we just kept moving on and they said, look, this is the fact my wife denied it and we're going to leave it at that. And, and, um, and people, I don't think at the end of the day made that judgment on us that held it against us. I think if they were Ron supporters, yeah, maybe they thought I was uh, the devil with horns. Um, but, you know, people who supported me, I think at the same part were like, look, you know, this is, we know this family and, and this, this is who they are. And, and that was what ended up. I mean, if I got beat by 20, I'd tell you I'd have concerns about it going forward in the future. Um, but look, everybody's ha- everybody's life has context, mm-hmm. and issues happen over time, and marriages are tough, and you know, and I've been divorced in the past, and you know, you try to be as honest as you can, but some things are about protecting your family, and and I, and I honored that, and and I don't have any second second thoughts about it. The only thing I get concerned about going forward in the future is um, you know making sure that if we do this again, or we get back in this, in the, in the, that we know it could get like this. Maybe I didn't expect it to get this bad. I thought it'd get bad. I just didn't think it would get as horrible as it did, uh, and that's a lesson learned. And and you have to make a decision as a as a in like that as a candidate. Are you willing to go there? You know. And and I never thought it would get as bad as it had in San Antonio. So one of the things I really hope is that as a city we don't ever get to these parts again. And if somebody's telling you something, we should try to do our best to believe them, unless proven otherwise, right? But. I think this is a perfect example of not everything's worth winning. Like, I, I don't need to roll my family out to, to win a race. Um, and we held the line on it. I'm, look, I'm proud of the campaign we ran, and, and we'll work hard going forward in the future to continue honoring everybody who supported us. Quick, it almost sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, that something did occur, but it, it's a private matter. You, do, you all decided to handle it privately and you made a statement to the public and that's where you stand. Yeah, I think I think the statement to the public stands and you know my wife is the best proof source on it, right? At at the end of the day politicians are politicians and family's family. And I think when my wife came out and said the tough things that needed to be said, and this is the scary stuff too, right? I mean, she denied it and then they called her a liar. Like you can't you can't my point is you can't win either way. In the heat of a political campaign, like when it's ugly and it's used as a political attack, you can't win either way. Because here's a good rule of thumb. Ron Nuremberg never cared about domestic violence for six years. Didn't care about it. Never mentioned it. Never did anything about it. Until it became an opportunity for him to get votes. Then it showed up on his mail pieces, right? I mean, that's, that's the truth. That, that's the truth. So, in my opinion, when my wife... You said, you know, that's false, that didn't happen, and they immediately called her a liar and all these other things. I'm like, what? Well, we're not going to win. Now, you can't, not, not, not win the race, but you can't win in the media, in the harsh spotlight of a campaign. It's difficult, and they're going to they're, they're gonna do all they can. And I think the Express News did all they could, uh, and I still almost won. I mean, it was, it was just a, it's a lesson in what are you willing to sacrifice to make your dream happen. And in my book, not everything. 
Uh, my wife is far more important in votes. My family was far more important in being mayor, and we'll hold the line on that as a family. And um, but it was scary, you know, because you can't say right. It, your spouse comes out and says that's false. That's false. You're a liar. I, I mean, well, you're lying. You're covering. You're lying. I mean, what the? I mean, who who gets believed anymore in our political discourse? It's only in so much as can it get me a vote. And I think we have to fix that because that's not San Antonio, right? I mean, that's really not us. And I consider this to be the most divisive campaign that's been ran, and I've been around a lot of them, in San Antonio city council politics, period. It was, it was that ugly and that media biased in certain corners. And I think, I hope we don't go there again. Um, but, you know, people will do anything to win. I won't. And I'm, and I'm more about protecting my family and, um, and honoring that, and that's what we did. And I'm, I'm fine with the decision. I didn't need to be mayor um, to, and hurt my family at the same time. So I'll go home and be just as happy and proud of what we were able to accomplish. Uh, and a lot of people believed in us. It just wasn't enough, right? And, and that's, you've got to be willing to win or go home. And you've got to be gracious in defeat as well. And Ron earned it. Uh, however he earned it, he, he, you know, he earned it. Uh, but I think there are issues and things we need to be working on in this city, and we're going to continue to fight them. And you'll see more of me in the future. I'm not going away. Are you all able to now, elections over, bury the hatchet, shake hands, and be colleagues? Uh, you know, look, I mean, that's a, that's a tough campaign. I'm a forgiver um, by nature. Uh, it's sometimes some things are tough to forgive, especially the attacks on spouses and family. I think those things get out of line. Um, but uh, I'm a forgiver by nature, and I think you got to get there on it because really you, you forgive and move on, um, not for the person, but the other person before yourself. So we'll get there on it. It's tough because nobody wants to see their their things as a, as a husband. You don't want to see your wife talked about in certain matters like it was during the campaign. Uh, not just by them, but by support, his supporters, too, saying things that were very horrible. Um, and it's just not right. Like, I don't, I don't care how bad you want to win. I, I, it's not right. And if my people did it, I would have said, you need to stop. Th this is not worth it. And I did. And, um, you know, from a colleague perspective, well, we'll never be colleagues because I'm off the council. And, uh, and it is what it is. Uh, but, no, I mean, look, you got to forgive at the end of the day. Uh, it's the only way to move on past it. It's just very raw, and you get, you know, when you think you're going to win, you know, and you get that close, it hurts. Um, but I'm just proud of it. Like, even that election night, I was running around telling everybody, man, we look at what we did. Like, look at what we accomplished. Don't hold your, don't hang your head. Don't sit there and walk moping around, man. Get your margarita, you get your big red, and let's, let's be thankful for what we did and not forget that people believed in us 49%. And we still have to go forward. Like we still have a, a, we still have things to do. Like we can still carry this forward, and let's not quit. So uh, I, I don't. Um, and I, I, the mayor's got his plan. He's gonna do what he's gonna do. So he earned it. And now it's time to turn the page and see what comes next. That's it. Sounds like it transformed you. Oh, yeah, I did. Um, I thought I would be a sore loser at the end of it. Like I thought if I got that close, I thought, well, that's going to be heartbreaking if I can't get this job. And it turned out, this is really interesting, it turned out that the win was just getting closer to my family. <laughs> that was it. Because if I took the beating, I lost, right? If I, took, if I got beat, I thought maybe when it all started, I said, man, if I got beat, it's going to be heartbreaking because I want it to be mayor so bad for this city because I believe we could do better. And then as the campaign went on, it got ugly and divisive and all that happened, right? I started recognizing that my family was getting closer than we've ever been. So when I lost, I got beat that night. I was like walking around the party like, let's party. Look at what we accomplished. So it is transformative because as a political guy for consultant and, and for decades, right? I've done this work for almost 15 years now, 20 years almost. I, I've, I've been on the end where you lose and it's, it's, it's anger. And it wasn't that. And so it was transformative. It was like, I think I recognize that the city has got opportunity, it's got beliefs, it's got things we can do together. And, um, and it transformed my marriage even further to the next step because we just became a team. Uh, my kids are proud. My son got elected to the student. He ran for student council president, got elected. One Brockhouse won last week. <laughs> uh, he ran for student council president, won fifth grade. 
um, it was transformative all around. And so the, the, it, was, it was huge. I'm glad you asked that question. That was, uh, that's a very astute point that I wouldn't have thought. Like, and my wife and I were talking about that just the other day. Like, look at what this has done for us. Like, never stronger. And at, at the worst professional, you know, to lose a race like that, you're like, oh. But in reality, it didn't happen that way. It was more like, well, we did it. I mean, look what we did. And we'll keep going for San Antonio, right? Because we love this place. And people, I think, bought into it. They believed it. The problem is don't quit. That's what my wife's been telling me every day since, since the vote ended. It was like, don't quit. Otherwise, you, you did lie. You, you, you gave up. So don't quit. So we're not going to quit. We're going to keep coming.